What's up, AP Bio Penguin? Today we do 2023 number one on gene expression and cell communication. In eukaryotic microorganisms, the PHO signaling pathway regulates the expression of certain genes. These genes, foe target genes, encode proteins involved in regulating phosphate homeostasis. When the level of extracellular inorganic phosphate is high, a transcriptional activator of FO4 is phosphorylated by a complex of two proteins, FO80, FO85. As a result, the FO target genes are not expressed. When the level of extracellular phosphate is low, the activity of FO80, 85 complex is inhibited by another protein, FO81, enabling FO4 to induce the expression of these targeted genes. A simplified model of this pathway is shown in the figure. And so, as I've said before, we want to modify this diagram so that we can kind of help give ourselves some feedback, okay? So when there's a high amount of phosphate, I see that FO81 does not act on FO80 and 85. So I see that this is going to allow for the phosphorylation of FO4. And when uh, FO4 is phosphorylated, we do not see FO expressed. But in a low amount of phosphate, I see that FO81 is going to inhibit FO80 and 85. And because FO80 and 85 traditionally phosphorylate and they're inhibited, they're not going to phosphorylate the FO4. And so now we're going to see that these genes are going to be expressed. So we are expressed the FO uh, genes. To study the role of different proteins in the PHO pathway, researchers used a wild-type strain of yeast to create a strain with a mutant form of FO81 and a strain with a mutant form of FO4. In each of these mutant strains, researchers measured the activity of a particular enzyme, APase, which removes phosphate from its substrates and is encoded by PHO1, a FO target gene. They then determined that the level of PHO1 mRNA relative to that of the wild-type strain yeast was set to 10. So here we are seeing this data that we're going to use in later parts of the question. So part A says to describe the effect that the addition of a charged phosphate group can have on a protein that could cause the protein to become inactive. So what's happening is we're adding something to a protein. And I always tell my students, if you add something to a protein, you always change the shape. And so what we see here is that it changes the shape. And if you change the shape of the protein, you traditionally are going to change the function of it. So the student said, the addition of a charged phosphate group likely changes the tertiary folding structure of a protein, and since structure determines function, a change in its folding due to the phosphate group could cause the protein to become inactive. Then we also need to explain how a signal can be amplified during signal transduction in a pathway such as the PHO signaling pathway. So what we're looking here is that transduction, right? So we have response, I'm sorry, the receptor, then we have transduction, and then we have response. So when we go through a phosphorylation cascade, it's not just one relay molecule activating the next. We see that one relay molecule is then going to activate multiple. And as you continue going through that transduction pathway, you're going to activate more and more of these molecules. And so each enzyme can act on many copies of a protein. And so that's how we see that amplification. Signal is amplified when there is a chain reaction, like a phosphorylation cascade. One reaction leads to another, often increasing the size and impacts of the reaction as they continue to pass along. Okay, so we need to see that they act on many copies of that protein. So sadly, the student did not get the point here. Um, so the exemplar that they have posted online actually didn't get a perfect score, and this is the one point that they didn't get. <laughs> So part B, based on table one, which I've given you below, identify a dependent variable in the researcher's experiment. Okay, so the dependent variable is what is going to change because of whatever the experimenters are testing. Okay, so they change the mutations and we're seeing the, the results from it. And so I'm going to see AP, APACE activity. I'm also going to see the relative amounts of the FO1 mRNA. So there's two different answers here. You could have said APACE activity or you could have said the FO1. Um, so there's your two options. Um, so students said one dependent variable is the activity of APACE in using the wild type. Oh, sorry, that's the next part. <laughs> so then they say to justify the researchers using the wild type strain for the creation of the mutant strains. OK, so why do I need to have this wild type thing? Like what would be the function of having this? OK, well, the control is always going to allow us to determine how my independent variables are affecting the, the outcome. Okay. So it ensures that the observed differences between the strains are due to the int introduced mutations. They mutated these different yeasts, and they want to see, are the changes that we see from those mutations, are they actually affecting the APACE activity as well as the FO1 amount? Okay. And it ensures that the uh, strains are genetically identical except for the introduced mutations. Students said, um, in using a wild-type strain to create the mutant strain, the researchers can ensure that the only mutation is the one they induced, and all other genes are consistent with the wild type. Okay? So then we look here and we say, justify the researcher using the mutant strain in which only a single component of the pathway was mutated. Okay? Um, and so by us only mutating that one thing, okay, we're going to be able to 
determine the effects of each of those mutations separately. I can see exactly what a mutation 81 does versus I can see exactly what a mutation in FO4 does. Okay, um, So it allows them to better determine which component is actually responsible for the results that we see. Students said, furthermore, by using the mutant strains, they had only a single component mutated. They could then know any significant differences in enzyme activity were for sure caused by that one mutation, since everything else was the same. So part C, identify on the data in table one. Um, identify the yeast strain and growth conditions that led to the highest relative amount of FO1 uh, mRNA. So when I look here, I can see that the highest number is 10. Okay, And so what I'm trying to figure out is what condition caused this. Well, that would just be the wild type yeast and that low uh, inorganic phosphate. So here we can see wild type and the low inorganic phosphate led to the highest amount of the uh, FO1 mRNA. Then they ask us to percent, uh, calculate the percent change in APAs activity in wild type yeast cells in a uh, high inorganic phosphate environment compared to that of the wild type cells in the low inorganic phosphate. So I'm looking here and I say, okay, well, I'm looking for wild type. I'm comparing high and low and I'm comparing the APAs activity. Okay, so this is my data. Now, the equation that we're going to use here is our percent change. Now, this is not given to you on the formula sheet, so you want to make sure that you do know this formula, okay? All it is is the final minus the initial over the initial, and then you'll multiply that by 100 to get into a percent. And so, what is my final and what is my initial? Well, the question wasn't very clear on this, and so as long as you used one to subtract the other divided by the other, you would be fine, okay? Um, so, we're going to say, okay, that if my low is my initial, so 17.3 um, minus 0.5 divided by, I'm sorry, I said that backwards. Um, my final being my 17.3 minus my initial being 0.5 divided by initial being 0.5. Um, and then that gives us 16.3 divided by 0.5. And then that will give us 3,360%. Okay. Now there was two options to this. You could have also talked about the negative option, okay, in which you went um, 0.5 minus 17.3 divided by 17.3. Um, and that would have given you the other options here, which is negative seven, uh, 97%. So the students said the wild type yeast in the low uh, inorganic phosphate environment had the highest relative amount of FO1. Um, the percent change is 3,360%. Um, and so notice that they did just kind of write out their math. This was a calculate, so they, you are perfectly fine to write this as an equation. Um, personally, I tell my students to still write it as a full sentence at the end. You know, the percent change was blank. Um, it takes five seconds to write those extra words. It's fine. Um, so then for part D, in a follow-up experiment, researchers created a strain of yeast with a mutation that resulted in the non-functional um, FO85 protein. Based on figure one, predict the effects of this mutation of FO1 expression in the mutant strain in the high inorganic phosphate environment. Provide reasoning to justify your prediction. Okay, so I would like to modify my diagram, right? So we're looking at the high. So we're looking over here at this diagram, this little side over here. And they say that there is a mutation that is causing FO85 to be non-functional. Well, if FO85 is non-functional, then we're not going to be able to see this step here. So I'm not going to see FO4 getting phosphorylated. And we know that if FO4 does not get phosphorylated, that I'm going to see my genes will be expressed. So I would expect there to be, I would expect to see that the FO gene was expressed, that there would be a increase in the FO1 expression. Um, and the justification for that would be that since the FO4 is not being phosphorylated, it will be acting as a transcriptional factor to turn on that gene. Um, and so here you can say it, oh God, uh, FO1 target genes will be expressed. Um, and then a non-functional FO85 will be unable to phosphorylate or inhibit the FO4. Um, and so students said mutation resulting in non-functional FO85 would, result in trans would allow transcription of the FO target gene despite a high inorganic phosphate environment. This is because FO85 would not be able to form the FO8085 complex and phosphorylize um, FO4. Furthermore, FO4 will transcribe the gene, the target genes, um, even when it should not lead to an increase. FO1 expression. Hope that was helpful. Remember, H-Biopay was just assessed by all.